Hi there everyone, we've got some really exciting objects today. We have an innocuous looking paper here that believe it or not is worth more than a million dollars and I'll explain why in a minute. And we have some photos in here, millions of dollars worth. We all take photography for granted these days, but imagine a time when photos didn't exist. You didn't even know what to call them. What would you call them? Photogenic drawings. Photogenic drawings? Let's find out what this person called them. So this is 1839 and William Henry Fox Talbot, who's been experimenting with photographic researchers for a few years, finds out that his rival on the continent, Daguerre, is about to publish a paper on just the thing he's been researching, what we now call photography. So he has to get a quick paper to the Royal Society to uh, get his precedent for the research into the Royal Society's archives. So he writes this paper. He's called it some account of the art of photogenic drawing or the process by which natural objects may be made to delineate themselves without the aid of the artist's pencil. I proposed to spread on a sheet of paper a sufficient quantity of the nitrate of silver and then to set the paper in the sunshine having first placed before it some object casting a well-defined shadow. He's describing how photos work in many ways here, isn't he? Like he is. So this is a very rudimentary process. So he's sensitizing a piece of paper. He's putting an object on top of it. He'd expose it to sunlight and you would get a print from that. This paper is worth some money. Recently valued at £800,000. Over a million dollars for mm -hmm. American people. Yes. Why is this paper so valuable? Fox Talbot's line of research went on to produce what they would eventually call a negative from which you could print out any number of positive images. So what Fox Talbot eventually ended up doing was reproducible photography and that's the key bit really for, uh, for, for it taking off uh, big style in Victorian England. Let's put this paper mm -hmm. to, to one side. Yep. In fact, before we do that, I want to take a selfie with it. This is me and the first paper to describe like photos properly. You liking that? Got it, yep. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move this. Where would you like to put this? Let's put it on the table behind us. Let, let me do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what have we got here, Keith? Well, photography took a little while to get going. Uh, techniques improved very, very rapidly from the beginning. And in a very few years, by the early 1850s, you were producing photographs such as this one. So Keith, how long after Fox Talbot's paper are pictures like this being produced? So most of this box uh, were, were being produced in 1852-53, that kind of period. So less than 15 years later. Mm. Uh, and these are by a uh, French photographer, a very famous one called Henri Regnault, and John Stewart, who's a, an English photographer who's related by marriage to John Herschel. Take a look, if you would. That's extraordinary, Keith. It could have been taken yesterday with a nice Instagram filter on it. Yeah, I mean, they're beautiful, beautiful things. So these are landscapes from the Pyrenees. Here we have a landscape, which is a rather beautiful one, showing some dappled sunlight in a, in a woodland scene. And you can see here that this is Sir John Herschel from Monsieur Regnault. And this is number five. It's a duplicate, it's a print of an image that Renu took. And he sent it to Herschel as a gift. That's right. So this collection belonged to Sir John Herschel. Just a little still life here from a French backyard, probably somewhere near where Renu was living and working. Keith, these photos are so old. Are these are very valuable as well? They are. They range in price depending on what the scene is, so its artistic value, what techniques being used, from around £10,000 to the most expensive print in this box has been valued at half a million pounds for one photograph. Half a million pounds? This is the half million pound photo? Uh, this isn't, but we can find it. This is more Pyrenean scenery Ana here. Another one from the Pyrenees. Mm -hmm. Another tree. Natural landscapes, very popular, of course. You could take these images in bright sunlight. And at last, we have some figures. Oh yeah, we can see there, are, it looks like there's a couple of people there sitting under the trees. This is a salted paper print, so this is very much Fox Talbot's processing. You can see it's slightly different from the ones we've seen before. 
I like these mountainscapes. I like these. They are very beautiful. Yeah. This is a John Stewart photograph, Cascade aux eaux brunes. And you can see here on the exposure time, so this is a, a waterway, but you can see the image of the water is very indistinct. Yeah, sort of becomes a bit blurred over time. Simply because the, the exposure times couldn't capture the flow of the water, and you can see it in there again. It's like silk. And finally, this is what half a million pounds would buy you by Henri Regnier. It's a riverside scene in France, as you can see. Uh, it has a few boats in the foreground. There's a, a village on your right there. And it's simply a very beautiful image. Many years ago, found these in the Royal Society's archives wrapped up in the same brown paper wrapper that they'd been transferred here with the rest of Herschel's papers. Nobody had looked at them in all that time. And because they hadn't had any light exposure, of course, they'd been preserved beautifully. I don't know what to say. They're beautiful. I, they're, they're, I'm, I'm very fond of these images. They're, they're really quite uh, evocative. Cool. Let's look at something very famous in the world of safety, and particularly to do with fire. And I know you yeah. love fire. Love fire, yeah, big fan. Let me okay. get this for you. So this is a very ah. nice object. Now, Steve, I have the impression you think you know what this is. <laughs> this has got to be a Davy lamp. This is, is it a Davy lamp? It is a Davy lamp. Yeah. Yes, this is yeah. one made by Humphrey Davy. Made by Davy. <laughs> That's incredible. So it's not the full lamp, it's a gauze, as you can see, and there's yeah. some evidence that there's a wick in there. It's essentially a flame arrester. 